Here's how to apply the orange-blue color grading on your nighttime photos with Photoshop. If you want to follow along this Photoshop tutorial, you can find the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's begin. First off, as always, we have to do the raw adjustments. And in the raw editor, we can set up the colors to give the shot this very cool orange-blue tones. So how do we start this? First, I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which will bring up the base saturation a bit. And you can see it also changes the brightness overall, bringing up the darks just a little bit. Next up, I do want to work on the white balance. I want to make the whole shot a little warmer. So let's bring up the temperature and maybe even raise the tint just very slightly. Doing this will kind of neutralize the blues, especially in the sky, but it will also give us some warmer highlights for the road and the foreground. So to bring back blues, we will rely on some split toning and a bit of color grading in the HSL panel later. For now, we do have to first work on the exposure. You can see in the sky, there's a super bright spot while the foreground is rather dark and we do have a little bit of unexposure when looking at the histogram. So I do want to fix that by just bringing up the exposure first. Let's raise it quite a bit so we get a lot of details here. Still after raising the exposure we don't have overexposure but the bright spot in the sky is way too distracting. So I'm going to drop the highlights and I hope to fix it that way. I don't think it's enough however, maybe we need to do some masking later. I also want to have some high contrast on the shot and I can begin working on the contrast by just bringing down the shadows. This might lead to some underexposure, but when I'm activating the clipping mask, you can see it's in an area which is not really important to the image down there in the foreground. Alright, so I think the exposure adjustments are fine for now. Let's introduce a little bit of texture because I want this shot to be very, very sharp. And I'm also going to add some vibrance, of course, just to get some more saturation. And that's the image after the base adjustments. You can see it's much, much brighter. We have a lot more details, especially in the shadows. The colors didn't have changed much, but this will come later. For now, let's work on the masking. As I said, this bright spot in the sky is very distracting. So let's grab a linear gradient and just drag it along like this. Here, I'm simply going to drop the exposure to make the whole sky just a bit darker. All right, then I am grabbing a radial gradient and I'm just placing it over the bright spot like this. Let's adjust the size a bit. All right, that should be fine. In here, I'm going to further bring down the highlights. And now you can see we're getting some more natural colors of the sky back. So the overexposure is pretty much eliminated. Then I'm going to increase the blacks, which adds a little bit of glow. And I'm also going to add a little bit of temperature just to give the bright spot some more warmth. Perfect. Now we could further enhance the glow effect. Therefore, I'm going to drop the clarity, which will make the area softer. And then I could drop the dehaze, but I need to be careful to not overexpose again. I, however, think the drop dehaze works great for the glow effect on this area. Perfect. Then let's grab another linear gradient for the very top part of the sky. Let's say just like this. And in here, I do want to further bring down the exposure, giving the top part just some more darkness and also just make the sky more interesting. And then I'm going to add a bit of clarity just to bring out the structure in the clouds a little more. Perfect. Now let's work on the highway. Here I'm going to use another radial gradient and I'm just creating a rough shape to cover the main part in the foreground right there. I do want to brighten it up by bringing up the whites. And I'm also going to add clarity. 
Now that's quite a lot of clarity. Usually I wouldn't add this for intense details in images, but in this case it works pretty good with the highway. So let's leave it at that. Then finally I'm going to use one more linear gradient for the whole landscape in the foreground. Let's say just like that. And in here I'm going to bring up the whites, making the whole landscape brighter. I'm also going to drop the shadows to add contrast. And finally some texture and some clarity for extra sharpness. Perfect. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. Again, huge improvement to before, especially in the sky, which looks much better now. We do get some more attention on the road due to the increased clarity and highlights. So that's good. Now let's take a look at the color grading. For that I'm starting in the color mixer tab with the hue. At the moment we still are missing those orange highlights, which I quite like for this scene, but that's pretty easily done. So in the hue tab I'm just going to bring down the orange hue. And depending on how strong you want it, you can drop it all away, but that's a bit too much for me. I just want to have this very, very subtle orange tone, just like that. To further improve this effect, I'm going to drop the yellow hue. Again, depending on how strong you want, you can go further, but I think that's enough. Now for the blue color tones. Every one of us knows the orange teal look. You would get that by just bringing down the blue hue all the way. But I think in this case it just looks weird and I'm honestly not a fan of that teal color tones for nighttime shots. So I'm just going to drop it very very slightly to not overdo that. But I think that's looking like a good color tone in the sky. Now let's switch over to the saturation. Here I'm going to bring down the orange saturation a bit as well as the yellow saturation. And then let's bring up the aqua tones and the blue tones. Just to balance the saturation between the sky and the highlights. That looks great. Not going to touch the luminance tab, but I would want to open up the color grading panel for the split toning. And just like for sunset shots, I'm starting with the highlights and here I want to apply a warm color tone to fit the highlights of those street lamps. So let's bring the hue up to orange and then pump up the saturation. Perfect. Then let's go into the midtones and for both the midtones and the shadows I'm using a cold color tone. So let's go with the blue hue right here. And for the midtones I'm going to use some more saturation. That looks about right. And for the shadows, again, blue color tone, but with a very low amount of saturation. Perfect. Now let me deactivate the color mixer so you can see the difference. And with just a few color adjustments, we can get this very cool orange blue look. Let's continue, however. I'm going to open up the calibration tab all the way down. And here I'm going to drop the blue primary hue which will work perfectly for this color style. This will just make the highlights a little more reddish while giving us some slight teal look in the blue parts. So again, just be careful with this slider, but it works great. Then I'm also going to bring up the saturation here. Okay. And I could even increase the red primary hue and the green primary hue. So for those sliders, I would suggest to just play around with them until you get something that looks great. Usually I'm just going to use the blue primary hue. In this case, I played around with red and green and just think the increased hue here makes the image look so much better. Now let's apply some sharpening in the details tab, drop the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking, just select the important areas like this and then raise the sharpening. Perfect. At this point, we are done with the raw adjustments. So all that's left to do is some Photoshop editing. So let's open up this object. Okay, so first off, I want to work on the brightness of the foreground. 
I'm going to add a new layer and switch the blending mode to overlay since I want to dodge things a bit. Now I don't want to dodge everything, I want to dodge a specific luminance range, in this case the midtones. I'm doing this by making use of the TK panel plugin. This does cost a bit of money, but there is also a free version available with which you can do the exact same thing as I'm doing right now. So I'm going to target the midtones by pressing this button and you can see how we nicely select the road without affecting the darkest parts around it. So that's a perfect mask. Let's create a layer mask out of it by checking this box and I'm again clicking on the midtones button. Then I'm grabbing the brush tool and I'm dropping the brush opacity to not get too crazy. And it's important for dodging, the foreground color is set to white since we want to make areas a bit brighter. And then I'm just starting to paint in a little more brightness just over the whole foreground. Okay, at first this might not look like much, but if I deactivate the overlay layer, you can see it's quite a big change. Due to the dodging, we lost some saturation in the orange highlights. So let's open up uh, the adjustment layers and here I'm going with selective color. And under the red color tones, I'm going to bring down the cyan GS the notch while increasing magenta and yellow. And thanks to this adjustment layer, we will just bring back some saturation to the orange highlights, as you can see. Then I do want to enhance the glow in the bright spot of the sky a bit. For that, let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light, and I'm trying to pick a color tone from in here, so with the brush tool active, I'm holding down the Alt key and just click in there. This tone is a little too dark as I'm raising, so I'm just raising the brightness by dragging it up. And again, I'm dropping the opacity of the brush and then I'm just going to paint in some glow up here. Should be enough already, I think. Then let's work a bit more on the contrast. Again, I'm creating a new layer and again, I'm switching the blending mode to overlay. This time I want to burn things. This means I'm going to darken them and I want to specifically target the darkest parts of the sky and maybe in the distance in the landscape. For that reason, I'm going to use the darks mask from the TK panel plugin. So let's go with darks 4. And on that layer, I'm going to set the foreground color to black since we want to burn things. And then I'm just going to brush over the sky and the landscape in the back. I could actually bring up the brush opacity for that. Just have a more visible effect. Just by doing this, we have added a lot more contrast, which is great. Now I want to do some more heavier editing. For that, I want to merge all those layers into a single layer. So hit Control Shift Alt E. So in case we need to undo something, we always have those backup layers below it. What I want to do now is to make the mountain range in the distance a little bigger, since they look quite tiny because of the wide angle I used. So to do that, I'm going to edit and here I'm using the perspective tool. With this tool active, I'm first going to create a grid around the mountains like this. Then I'm going to create a grid just up there and I'm making sure those points are snapping together. And then we need one more grid for the foreground, just like this. With the grid set up, I'm going to hit warp and then I'm holding down the shift key and click on the line to select both of those points. And now just drag them up slightly to scale up the mountains in the distance. Perfect. Once that is done, just hit the check icon and let me deactivate so you can see the difference, which is quite big and makes the image so much better. Now, at this point the horizon does look a little bit distorted, so I'm going to create a white line just like that. And I'm hitting Ctrl T to bring up the transformation, right click here, let's choose warp. And then I'm just trying to straighten the horizon a bit. 
This looks much, much better. So at that point, we can start cleaning up the image. I should have done that first, maybe. I just kind of forgot. So let's use the spot healing brush, zoom in, and just get rid of the sensor spots first. And then it's time to clean up the foreground. So for that, I'm using the lasso tool, just creating a rough selection around that light. And then hit Shift F5 with content that we're selected, hit OK. Perfect. And let's do the same on this thing. And I also want to get rid of those highlights shining through the bush. Okay, that looks super awesome. Now I just want to add a little more contrast. So let's do this by using a curves adjustment layer and create a simple S curve. So I'm creating a point for the shadows and slightly drop it and a point for the highlights and slightly raise it. And maybe let's bring down the opacity of the curves adjustment layer just to weaken the effect a bit, but this looks really, really good. So at this point, we are done editing this image. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.